Okay, everybody needs to take a seat. Everybody just stop flying in the air, please, for just a moment. And you take a seat, you take a seat, you take... Everybody just take a seat. This guy right here is not a parrot. Hi everyone, Wax Fraud here, and welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Let's Play series. Today, as you can see, we are starting off in the giant ancient city aquarium that we had built. This thing is absolutely massive, and we have about 300 fish in here, and we're still moving some more in on the live streams. Let me tell you, I am very much ready to get back to building some houses. We've been randomizing this aquarium for about a week now, and I kind of just want to start building some actual structures. Building this thing was very fun. I'm sure the fish are loving it here too, but, uh, you know, I think building houses is my favorite. One thing that does matter is that the fish love it here. They are swimming around absolutely everywhere in this new home. I'm sure you could guess from the title of the episode, we are building a parrot sanctuary today, and uh, I'm actually kind of happy about that because we've been underground for so long. Believe me, this was very fun, but uh, I think it's time we head out. We do have a couple things, though, to take care of before we start building that sanctuary. We've transformed the nightclub back here. We have the ancient city portal that's completely redone. And the ancient city village right over here is basically complete, except I realized they don't really have a way to tell time, and there's no clocks down here. So I was trying to think of a good spot for these guys to be able to tell some time, and I think right in the center of town, just on an inconspicuous barrel right here, there goes the clock. Thank you guys for being yourselves. I appreciate you. I hope you enjoy the new way to tell some time. We have been down here for about a month and a half building. We have this giant train station over here. We have three beacons down, actually. I think I'm going to have to take two of them. One is over here by the ancient city portal, and I believe we have one over here by the nightclub as well. It's about time we say farewell. Thank you so much, dude. You did a great job, but uh, we're going to have to move you back upstairs. I feel like while we're over here picking up these iron blocks, we should go say what's up in the nightclub. Quick left turn right here, and what's going on, guys? How you doing? Hope you're having a great time. Disco Cat's still up here holding down the fort, and yes, he is. What's up, Disco Cat? I'm never going to get tired of going in this place. And how did this guy get up here? Actually, it really is kind of difficult for him to get all the way over here. He must have climbed a ladder, or he... I don't even know. He would have had to crawl all the way along these brick stairs from this fortress. It's actually kind of wild. He's all the way over there. He crawled over these campfires, made his way along these brick stairs, and we actually have this guy right here, too. What are you doing, dude? Before I forget, I'm actually going to go take out that other beacon. You also did a great job, my friend. Thank you very much for being yourself, but it is time to go back upstairs. Take the glass pane. Give me all these iron blocks. One thing left to do now in this ancient city, now that we have it completely full of life and ready to go, it can kind of just live on its own. But that one thing left to do is to take all of these materials back home. We have one, two, three... Nine shulker boxes downstairs, and if we go up here, we have six right here in the back, and we have seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven upstairs. Not to mention all of these barrels that are up in the ceiling, completely filled with deep slate over here, and in the walls filled with all the deep slate. Also, a couple random chests. I don't really remember why we filled them up down here, but we have those too. Lewis and Frank have been watching me slowly fill all these up. A couple shulker boxes filled with the leftover loot from the remaining chests that we didn't get next to some of the shriekers that were left over. We have a bunch of leftover moss and azalea blocks for decoration later if we want to use them. And if we go down our secret little hallway back here, we have a bunch of skulk to take back home. Safe to say we have a lot of materials, and most of this is probably going to go to the auto-sorting system. Since we spent over a month down here, we have so many random items to take back. This is going to take a while. You know what? Let's just start taking them all down. Our ender chest is full, and now our inventory is completely full. We have way too many shulker boxes. It's, it's time to go home real fast. And there goes a wasted rocket. All the way back up here. I don't know when the next time I'm going to see these chickens, so I'll, I'll say goodbye to you guys for now. Actually, you know what? It wouldn't be a proper farewell if we didn't do this. Heading back to the nether hub, and we have a brand new friend right here. If you guys can remember from the last episode, I allowed you guys to name him. And in that last video, my absolute favorite name in the comment section that you guys left was Link. Link is going to stay here for as long as he can. I hope he doesn't hurt us too much. I'll try to give him a hug. Thank you. Ouch. Oh, let's go home. We got to put all this stuff away. There's actually a couple things that we have to take care of as well back home. For some reason, we have a lot of mobs that just like to get stuck. And of course it's raining. It is always raining. Fly in real quick. What's up, dude? It is good to see you guys. This guy over here looks a little confused. Are you okay, buddy? Honestly, this is just the type of energy I was looking for this episode. Let's go. We have a lot of shulker boxes. Let's start placing them down and getting in everybody's way. And this isn't even everything from the barrels that are in the ceiling and the walls. And Santa, actually, get back on that cake. Thank you very much. And like I mentioned before, we put any of this stuff away. There's a couple things to put back into place. A couple of mobs just keep getting stuck. For starters, all the way over here by the dripstone farm and the bee sphere, we have a cow tree. I'm not really sure how many cows are in here. I'm not sure how this cow tree was formed, but I do love this cow tree. 
You know what, on second thought, I was gonna take this out, but this is a once-in-a-lifetime chance. It's not every day you have a cow tree in your world. And you know what, actually, you guys get to stay. Let's go take out the other guys, though. We've done this once or twice already, and I didn't want to have to do it again, but we have so many villagers right here. Why? Why are there 20 to 30 villagers in here? And a cow? What are you doing in here, cow? Right here, these guys are probably causing just a little bit of lag, so I think one by one, we just have to bam, sorry, bam, sorry, dude. I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry, everybody. I'm probably gonna have to watch out for some iron golems after this, because they're gonna be hunting me down, possibly. But we really gotta make sure these guys also can't get in here anymore. Because these guys get stuck, and then all of a sudden the villager breeder is making more and more villagers, and then all of a sudden we have hundreds of villagers back here. I usually try to be nice to the villagers too, but when they're all stuck in a well, and stop looking at me, dude, I'm sorry. We have the last two guys right here, sorry dudes. And other than changing the design of the well, I really don't know another solution right now, that maybe just putting some glass panes down. I'll just put one right here, there, and there. Walk around to the other side and put one, two, and three. If the villagers somehow get in here now, I, I really don't know how they're doing that. We had a new build that I wanted to show you guys, and that is the new sweet berry farm under the fox sanctuary right here. But uh, I actually ran into another sanctuary where there's an issue of all these sniffers getting stuck in the corner. These guys are always getting stuck right here, so I'm actually just going to preemptively put some chiseled stone blocks right here. Thank you very much, sir, for getting out of the way. Actually, this iron golem is now in the way again. Okay, everybody is in the way. Everybody is stuck in this corner right now, and I can't place this block. Okay, maybe it's this iron golem that's being a bad influence. You gotta go, sir. It might be just this guy and this guy alone that's not allowing me to place that chiseled block. Please move. Okay, let's get in here. Let's try this one more time. And there we go. Put a cherry leaf right here and right there. And we are now good to go. That is perfect. Guys, you shouldn't have to be stuck in this corner anymore. And we released them. Okay, yeah, they definitely were stuck right here. Let's get you out. All right, buddy, I'm pushing you back in. Get in there. Thank you. Okay, and they are unstuck. That was much more of a task than I thought it was going to be. Makes it all that much more fulfilling to come over here and show you guys the brand new sweet berry farm that's down here under the fox sanctuary. So I don't know if you guys remember, a while back we had made this fox sanctuary and named it after a bunch of the Twitch chatters. And actually, if you go down here, we have a brand new lower section so that they can actually take out all the sweet berries they want. Arctic foxes definitely still need their own home, but uh, this is the most efficient sweet berry farm that I've ever had. Fox Sanctuary Farm definitely got a lot louder. These guys are sprinting back and forth just everywhere. But if we go around the front side, are you going to make a beeline for this door if I open it? Please stay still, sir. Do not do anything. Thank you. You can walk around the front, take a quick left turn, go right down the stairs. You are now underground, and you have a brand new sweet berry storage. I just set this up, and that's a lot more sweet berries than I thought would be down here, but something I'm seeing is no minecart in here. Gonna have to break this dirt block and head in. What do we got going on? This guy is stuck. Why is the minecart getting stuck? That's kind of strange. I guess let's just give it a little push right there and get on our way. Head out before it hits us right here. We'll put you back and we have the peony. We'll put you back and the farm is back up and running. Should be collecting more sweet berries. There we go. It is rising. Let's get out of here. Thank you guys for watching those YouTube streams, by the way. It really does mean a lot having you guys show up. Now we can do something extra important and go right over to our goal board in front of the starter house and wipe off that sweet berry sign that has been here for ages. Where is it at? Right here. There you go. Got a little too excited and took the oak plank with me. And now that I'm here, I'm remembering that uh, from the 8,000 days video, we saw this giant dirt and glass tower that pretty much needs to go. It's a little bit of an eyesore. We went all the way up here to get the Star Trader advancement, and it looks like my guy down here has just fallen a little bit. The puppy up here is doing just fine, but uh, this guy down here, what are you going to do? I thought it might be a little silly to take the dirt column out while this guy's still in here, so let's just try this out. He's going to hang out, and he is just going to be... Oh, I'm sorry, dude. See you later. Well, that's one way of telling somebody to get down. I think what we're going to have to do is actually just take out the soul sand block from all the way down here and take out, oops, take out the sand then and uh, replace this water with some sand. Pick some up from the starter house. Then we just sit up here and spam some sand with our new puppy. Almost got the water gone and we are good. Now we can actually just take this sand and the dirt all the way back down, right it to the ground level. This was a really fun advancement to get, but uh, unfortunately we made it right in front of our starter house, so I have to look at it every single day. It's easy enough to take all the way back down, though. Four hours later, we have finally reached the bottom. Just put all this dirt, all this sand away, as well as everything downstairs in the shulker boxes. We should probably get to unloading this. It's going to take a while. But it's nothing a live Twitch stream can't handle, and thank you guys for watching. By the way, it is twitch.tv slash We do stream every single day. 
As you can see, we finally have everything emptied here. We have so many shulker boxes empty. I need to put all of these back in the shulker box hall, or we could use some of them to continue going back and gathering some of that deep slate down in the ancient city. We have some music discs we need to take down to the disco anyways. Also, this shulker box right here, this is filled with some of the ores that we hadn't taken up yet. Maybe we should just take them down right now. This is a lot of diamonds, we have a lot of redstone, a lot of coal, and we also have a lot of iron, so it's going to take a little bit to tower up here. Never thought I'd have enough diamonds to stack up this high. Wow, we can still barely see the hot air balloon, and I'm actually thinking what we should do is tower these up, and uh, as a celebration at the end of the episode for getting the build done, we should just take all these down and see how much ore we have. I have popped a totem flying down too hard right here before, so I am going to just go as gently as I possibly can. It's going to be so fun taking out this tower. We're going to get so many resources. And with all of that being out, we have a bunch of empty shulker boxes that we should probably take out right now because we're going to use it to grab all of that deep slate. Actually, while we're here in the ender chest, I want to show you, we do have a lot of tropical fish that we should probably take back as well. Flying back over to the ancient city one last time. It's going to feel nice to come down here, drop off all these fish at the aquarium, grab the deep slate, and then really never have a reason to come back here except for to come and check up on the villagers and take a gander at all of the stuff that we built. I realized that uh, we never actually put salmon in here, so these three big salmon, uh, these are going to be the first of its kind. And of course, a bunch of random tropical fish that we picked up from the Wandering Trader. Wandering Trader is a good place to grab a bunch of fish that you might never get a hold of. But let's drop all of these guys off real fast. Get a salmon here, get a salmon there, we're gonna get a salmon everywhere. Yeah, as time goes on, we're just gonna keep on adding more and more of these. Get all of these buckets put away and grab all of these shulker box one more time. Time to get that deep slate. Time to take everything that we've taken from here and bring it back home finally. Taking all these back is going to be a challenge because I actually did forget we have so many barrels down here too from when we first actually started excavating everything. I forgot I put a bunch of materials down here. I don't think we're running out of deep slate and tough for a very long time. I do have a cool new spot that I want to show everybody. Uh, this is going to be the new place where I'm getting all of the materials sorted. As you guys know, we have our auto sorting system right here where we can drop all of our materials off. We have the gravel. Let's just get that in right now. Head down to the first rail system here and we'll hop on the minecart. This actually used to bring us all the way over to the auto sorting system. And now, for the time being, it actually brings us over to this underground giant mess hall. And I'm going to hop off the minecart probably right now. That can get sent and I'm just going to show you guys this thing is absolutely enormous did this all on a youtube stream and thank you for watching if you did but uh, now we have the second tunnel that's going to bring us all the way over to the new location that i have shown you guys but now this tunnel is a little bit more cleared and we've completely torched up this place and got the beacon in the spot where it needs to be so that we can start excavating this a little bit more i am very excited this actually goes all the way up through rainbow mountain and now we can finally have the auto sorting system a little bit further away from our starting home base this project is for another day, though. We actually have a couple other things that we need to focus on. For now, I am going to drop off most of these shulker boxes right here, though, until we get this hallway completed. It's always fun having a bunch of side projects to work on. By the way, I know I mention it all the time, but if you are interested in checking out those side projects and seeing the progress on them, feel free to stop by the streams anytime. Now it's time to start focusing on these parrots, and I actually only have two of them right now, and we got them all the way back in episodes one and two, and if you go in here, they're still in the panda sanctuary. We got this little guy right over here, and we also got this guy right here. Let's get this fern out of the way. We need to get these parrots to uh, just somewhere a little bit uh, nicer. Let's get you, sir, right here, and they're both on my shoulders. This is perfect. There are a few spots that I have in mind that I'd like to get these guys. I think we're going to go over towards the pumpkin patch. Crazy how these guys will just stay on your shoulder for a mile-long journey. It's nice to see the villagers making their way over towards the pumpkin patch. I like this place to be a little bit more lively, and these villagers are doing exactly what they need to be doing. One day I was walking over in this area, and I noticed that, uh, I mean, over here is very lively. We have all of the pumpkins, these giant pumpkins for this patch over here, and then to the right is this giant field that we've built absolutely nothing in, and I think right now is the, the time to build a giant hanging gardens area for these parrots. I'm gonna sit you guys down here, and uh, you know what? Your home is about to get built. Look at this guy dance. This guy's got the moves. I'm gonna push you over here just a little bit so I know exactly where you're at when I'm building this thing, and I have a shulker box ready to go. I think I'm gonna use a bunch of quartz pillars and blocks of quartz, and I have a bunch of emeralds for when I inevitably run out of quartz. First things first, we do need to clear this space. We have some jungle trees. We have some cherry trees right here. Let's get all this taken out. We actually probably are running a little bit low on cherry wood anyway, so this is nice. 
Well, the field seems to be cleared out, but now that I'm actually over by Rainbow Mountain, this light blue area right here, I'm not really sure what I was thinking. As well as this cyan, we could probably bring this back towards the mountain a little bit. We need less talking and more doing. Thank you again to Efficiency 5, we appreciate you. Uh-oh, we're revealing all of that desert sand right here, so actually we're probably going to get all of this replaced with some grass. Goodbye, sand. And then it's time to bring in all the grass. Okay, not bad. We have a giant grassy field over here, and just in case, I actually don't have any lightning rods over here, so we planted one right next to the beach. If lightning ever hits this rainbow mountain, that would just be devastating. First things first, I'm going to square out this area. I'm going to see how large of a square I can actually put here. Just going to bing, bang, boom, and bop our way to the middle. And we do have a decent sized square. It's going to probably end up being a little bit bigger, so uh, I think first things first, let's just build straight up. We're going to separate each of these floors by five blocks. That way we can make the distance between all these floors equal. Other than Rainbow Mountain, this is already kind of the tallest structure over here. Still can't wait for the day till we get something in this lake over here too. We're going to start making this top platform up here, except we're not going to connect the corners. Because we're actually going to use the quartz pillars instead. We'll actually go right here and move right up. Jump down right over here, replicate this on all four sides. Then we're going to get up to the top here, and on this next layer, we just need to bring this out for probably about three more blocks. We'll connect these courts up to this pillar right here. We're going to make a platform right here. Eventually, we're going to break some of these in the middle, because we'll maybe just do a spiraling staircase. From the corner, we're going out one, two, and three. We'll drop down in the corner right here and pillar up again. And I believe we'll continue this all the way down. Looks like I'm already out of quartz. Let's, uh, hold on. Do I have any more down here? I don't... Nope. Let's, uh, let's take the shulker box. Let's go get more quartz. And before you know it, we have arrived. Let's grab a couple of these. Thank you very much, sir. I'll take these quartz blocks. Honestly, we've been coming back for quartz so often. I might double up the mason trading hall. We have 12 of them here right now, and I might just get another 12. That's gonna have to be for another day, though. It's gonna be about a three, four hour project. And now we can return to our quartz tower with a lot more quartz, hopefully enough to finish this project. Got the last couple on this layer, now we can drop down, here we go. Going out three more blocks, let's go diagonal one, two, and three. Kinda glad we're using quartz because if we happen to mess up anything here, we can just easily take it down. I really do love being able to instamine everything. Eventually this thing starts to take a pretty nice shape, sort of pyramidal. We are recording this during Christmas, so we have a couple of chests to lay out here. We have this little guy right here, and the double chest that turns into a green one. Happy holiday season to everybody, though. I do appreciate y'all. Started etching some designs in the top. I'm probably going to keep going through here and etching some more designs. I want to keep some space open around these pillars. But I think it'd be a good idea to come around and actually replace a lot of these missing blocks now with some moss. Nom 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 nom. Also, this middle beam right here, I'm actually just going to remove all of the quartz, and we're going to keep on replacing it with the glowstone. We actually started using quartz for the stairs around the middle pillar, so I think glowstone is going to be a nice, different color. Also, it provides a nice beaming source of light all the way to the bottom. We'll get some paths hooked up here, and we'll get more parrots. We actually did find another parrot recently on stream, and uh, we're going to have to go find some more. But first, next step is to replace all of the missing quartz with some moss. Start on the top floor here. We'll get some flowers in and the glow berries in in just a moment. Actually, wait, that blocked off the stairs. But we'll get the foliage in in just a moment. I want to make sure this moss looks good up here. Not too bad at all. That actually really makes it pop. And if we look at it from up above, that's pretty cool. Let's get these layers done. I tried to make all of these as symmetrical as possible. I really hope we didn't mess up anywhere. The sun reflecting on this quartz right now is absolutely beautiful. The moss in here is just a, such a nice touch. Actually, the sun is going down real quick. We could focus on these bottom lights so stuff stops spawning down here. We don't want any creeper issues. Let's fly to the nether tree farm real fast. I'm thinking some of these warped fences over here might do. Unfortunately, there's no green wood type yet, but with the mangrove and the cherry woods being added recently, uh, you know, that might happen soon. Let's grab some quartz stairs real quick, and we're going to light up the bottom. I think what we'll do is place some stairs like so, and we'll get the diorite below with the warped fence and the chain action and the end rod right below that. Some of you guys could have probably seen this coming from a mile away. Let's get this repeated on every side. On the corners and along the back side of these pillars here, I did want to start placing some of these glow berries. We'll start lighting them up with some bone meal as well to give this inside here a little bit more light. Right now we're working with some end rods, some glow berries, and some glowstone. 
Hope you guys are enjoying the moss patterns up here as well. I tried to make it look as intricate as possible. Do we have a wandering trader? We do, and I have emeralds on me. Thank you for that. Thank you for this, and thank you for this, and I'll take the cactus. You know what? I'll take the pack dice, and just give me the jungle saplings. Thanks, dude, and thank you, llama. Also, thank you. Ow! Thank you, llama. Appreciate you. Anyways, we'll put this stuff back real quick. Finish putting the stairs up in here for some structural integrity. One glowberry right here, and I think we'll get one in the corner right here, and that should light up pretty much the rest of the floor. We can get the torches out. I also thought it might be kind of cool to put hedges around the spiral staircase here, but I'm thinking I'm going to beef it up just a little bit more and maybe just turn this into a complete wall. Leave a one by 2 space here so we can walk in. Actually, we'll completely block this one off. Get this side completely covered over here. Okay, actually, each side can have its own little 2 by one door. So you can get in from right here, you can get in from over there, right here, and you can even drop in from this back side. I'm actually going to do that on every level. Let's take out the glowberries that I thought was going to be a good idea right there, and we'll replace it with some hedges. This is actually looking much better. Of course it's raining right now. Actually, you know, while we're on the second floor, and even the third floor up here, you can take a look at the intricacy. I tried to make sure that none of the pillars are being touched by the moss. On the top level now, we can finally get these last little hedges in. I'm going to leave a door right there, and we are good to go. Man, I really do like the look of the azalea bush. I think what I'm going to do is just go around the edge with these. You know what, let's get down here and make the rain stop real quick. And with these azalea leaves, we can create a sort of hedge effect. I want to try to get a little more color and detail in here. Let's use some iron trapdoors right there, and up here against the leaves, we're going to put some spruce trapdoors. That way, we can hang a couple more glowberries on the outside. I'm thinking these parrots are going to love this place. We're going to hang more glowberries, and I think before we start getting the foliage in, like all the flowers and everything like that, we should probably go get all the types of parrots. I believe there's five unique parrot types in this game, so we gotta head back to the jungle to try to find more. We have the red parrot, we have the blue, green, and yellow parrot, and also just the green parrot over here, so we have two more. Light these up real quick, and then uh, we'll let's just let them grow down to the ground, and let's go, uh, let's go get some parrots. The parrots that we've already acquired have come from this jungle over here next to Rainbow Mountain, and uh, I mean, it'd be a miracle if we were to find another one. I searched far and wide and was only able to find the first three, so we actually might have to go to a different jungle. And I think the next closest one might be next to the Swamp Tadpole Sanctuary. Take a little nether trip, hop out into the swamp. We have a bunch of the frogs still in here. What's up, guys? How you doing? These guys are going to remain until we actually just need more for the frog light farm. But for now, we're going to go all the way over to this jungle. Now, here is a giant jungle. We are bound to find at least a couple of parrots out here. In fact, if I fly all the way down here, I believe we found another blue, green, and yellow one. This guy right here took almost about 20 seeds. Through the vines, I was seeing a gray parrot. How many seeds are you going to take up here, buddy? He's taken a lot. These guys took a lot of seeds. I wonder how many parrots we can actually take back at a time. This guy right here is not a parrot. Seems like these parrots do teleport to you a little bit, but uh, if we were to use the elytra, they don't really travel to you as far. I'm going to refrain from going too fast so I can take these guys back to the nether portal with me. Well, we have both birds on us right now. What happens if we just walk backwards into the nether portal? I really hope they make it with us. Okay, and oh, they're still here. Let's go. Now we can just keep running. These parrots are going to teleport behind us the whole way. Looks like we have two more birds down here. Be my friend. Thank you, sir. And over here, sir, you need to be my friend. Thank you. Wait, hold on. Yep, thank you very much. Picking up two bluebirds right here, and sometimes it's actually easier to turn the hitboxes on when you're running through the jungle. These birds are very hard to find. Unless you're a master bird collector, and all of a sudden you just have 20 birds. And take a seat, buddy. Alright, we have, I don't even know how many. Let's count all these guys when we take them back. We have a long boat right ahead of us. Oh my god, these guys are everywhere. This is insane. Let's pick this last guy up. I'm going to jump down into the boat right here. Hopefully none of these guys can get in. I am just going to boat over and uh, kind of just stay next to the land so these guys have a place to spawn over. Are they going to be able to make it all the way over to this land here? Yes! Okay, there's all the birds. Yeah! I'm really hoping none of them are stranded in the water out there. Have you guys ever seen this many parrots in the desert? Looks like we are closer to home than ever. Here is Rainbow Mountain in all its glory. I also really love that we have a building out here now. This coral farm out here is just looking nice out in the middle of nowhere. Looks like we can just take a quick leap. There we go. We got a lot of steps to climb. We have so many parrots traveling with us right now. I love this valley, by the way. I cannot wait to get something built right here on this desert plain. Flying in with about 20 more parrots. Here we go. Let's meet up with the, I believe, 10 of them that we already have. 
Okay, everybody needs to take a seat. Everybody just stop flying in the air, please, for just a moment. And you take a seat, you take a seat, you take... Everybody just take a seat. Oh my god, this iron golem is beat up right now. You know what? Let's let's just get him some iron. This guy's been keeping us safe. The least we can do is get him back to health. We have so many parrots on the ground here. Actually, there's a couple more that are chilling in the nether. I'm going to bring them back. We have you, and we have you. How about you hop on my shoulder? Get on my shoulder there, guy. Let's get through the gate, and let's hop back in. All right, easy as pie. There should be still on my shoulder. Never mind, we went down the stairs. They're not on my shoulder anymore, but I'm going to get on the boat, and uh, hopefully these guys just follow me this way. Right over to this land bridge, and we do have the parrots. Thank you for following me, buddy. I appreciate that. Open this fence gate, close that fence gate. Let's keep these guys on our shoulders. Step aside, I have some parrots on me. Last buddy, take a seat and wait, wait, hold up. And you right there, take a seat. Oh, this last guy has just been floating in the air. Get down on the ground, sir, please take a seat. Come on, Let's, what are you doing here? Thank you for sitting. I think we we might have enough parrots. I'm, I'm not sure though. One thing I am sure about though, is that this place needs some foliage. Let's start off with the torch flowers, pitcher plants, and sunflowers, peonies, lilacs, and rose bushes. All of the tall flowers, plus the torch flowers are, like, honestly, these are the best looking flowers in the game. So, I pretty much consider them a double flower. They hold pretty much just as much value to me, and I really like them. I hear some people that don't like the torch flowers, but I, I don't understand that. They're so beautiful. Now, I was thinking if we could drop some water from right here, that would be nice, but uh, we would actually need somewhere for the water to fall. So, it could fall from the top section, maybe drop through this right here, go over to this moss block, this moss block, maybe even go over once more. We'll drop down, and we'll take out this block, and we can take out this block. And if my calculations are correct, this water bucket should end up all the way on the floor. I guess let's just do this, and uh, we'll follow it all the way to the bottom. If we did it right, then we should get a nice surprise, and the water will be right here. So that's perfect. What I'm going to do is make an intricate little waterway. Same thing as the moss upstairs. Nothing is going to be touching the pillar blocks. And to spice it up a little bit, we could use some glowstone down here. Oh, that's going to be nice. Got all the waterways made. I feel like we just need to get some more rose bushes in and out. Get some rose bushes on the outside of the structure, too. The outside of the structure always needs a little bit of love. Somehow this little bird got pushed away from all the other birds, and we gotta start moving these guys all the way up. And you know what? I'm actually just gonna start taking these guys up with me. Couple groups at a time. Let's just start out heading to the top. While we're at the top, I wanted to get four end rods up here for a small lamp. This bird needs to get out of the way. And somehow the wandering trader made it all the way up to the top level here. How did you do that, sir? Add some pink color to the top. We're going to get some cherry saplings up in here. As well as these bottom level... Yeah, right here. We have a bunch of flower pots, but no cherry saplings. And also, while we have these cherry saplings out, we could get some of them kind of growing over by the edge of Rainbow Mountain over here. A couple of cherry saplings over here never hurt nobody. It's a nice way to fill in these little back areas until we get a small structure back there. And actually, I'm just noticing right now, this sugar cane right here, it's It's floating. There's no water around here. Why is there sugarcane? This makes absolute zero sense, and I'm not going to take it out. It's going to stay here. Get the pink petals everywhere. These always look nice. Then we're going to run, jump around, bone meal everything that we possibly can, except for this creeper grass that you can get out of here. Bone meal the glowstone down here as well. Bone meal the outside so it starts to look a little bit more overgrown back here, especially up against the Rainbow Mountain. This is looking way nicer already. And you know what? Let's get a cherry tree going. Get you going right here, too. No! What's it? No, the parrot! Um, I don't know what happened. You guys didn't hear anything. Let's, uh, let's go back up to the top. No more horsing around. I'm actually just going to travel all the way up with this water column. And there we go. And I'm actually going to get a little bit of sea pickle action right here. Figured this would brighten up the top just a little bit. And let's get some of these parrots down. We got you three right here. Let's just get you to sit, sit down right there. The wandering trader keeps pushing around all the parrots. So I'm going to buy what I can from... Dude, get back here. I'm going to buy what I can from you. Give me these small drip leaves. And you know what? I really don't need anything else. I'm going to you, get out of here. Get out of here, sir. Thank you for your business. Okay, now we can set these infinite parrots down. You can get down, wait, get down here, sir. Just take a seat, thank you. Got this guy right here, and looks like one little guy right here might be the last one. Set you down right here, and set you down right there. Oh, that is perfect. Thinking a couple of tulips on this level right here never hurt nobody. Even a bee has made his way all the way up in here. That's awesome. 
The parrot sanctuary is officially done. We will continue adding all the parrots in here. Right now we have 37 parrots and uh, I think 37 more we could do. Taking a step back real quick though so I can look at this build. Wow, this is a huge hanging gardens. I love this. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's just so nice to finally have this space filled in and it's so nice and lush. We went from a completely flat, desolate land to a nice quartz build. Thanks again to all the YouTube members, Twitch subscribers, and Patreon supporters. It really does mean a lot, and thanks for the support. Taking a look over here from Rainbow Mountain as well, and oh yeah, this build is fitting in just right. Thanks again for watching. Remember to take care of yourselves, do something nice for somebody, and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye!